Hello everyone. I usually try to keep intros to videos short and sweet because I know how annoying it is watching three minutes of waffle before the video even starts. Please accept my apologies for the sombre message to follow. If you're not interested, I'll add a timestamp to the description below. If I cry or get emotional, I will not re-record this as this intro is about my pure and true feelings. But on the 16th of April 2021, my younger brother Scott passed away. He fought a long hard battle against COVID, pneumonia and endocarditis and won. The doctors told him he needs a miracle and he got one. Only to be taken out in mere seconds by a blood clot leading to a massive amount of blood loss. To say that I'm devastated isn't strong enough. I'm angry. I'm very angry. No one deserves to go like that. To get better and to be told you'll be home soon only to die suddenly and alone in a hospital without family or friends nearby. I cannot imagine how scary his last moments on earth were. Scott had his demons, as do we all, but to his core he was a caring and loving brother. He forgave me for all of my mistakes without question, even when I found it hard to forgive him. At the start of the pandemic, literally a few weeks before we all got locked down, I made a promise to him that as long as he would play Dark Souls, he could come around to mine every Friday until we finished it. The reason was because Scott kept saying how much he hated Dark Souls, but I knew with his love of things like the original Resident Evil games, he'd love it. And from that moment on, every Friday became gaming night for Scott and I. We worked our way through Dark Souls, through his anger at how annoying the game can be, through his absolute love and passion for the game, to the point he now has a Solaire poster on his wall in his bedroom, which is still there despite his room now being empty. Every Friday, every Friday I'd look forward to gaming with him, and even when we couldn't see each other due to the pandemic, we'd just play online instead, to the point that his neighbours questioned him about the noises Asking if he was okay, hearing him scream at the angst that Dark Souls can cause. Those Fridays made us brothers again. I wrote him a Christmas card for Christmas 2020 saying, Getting my brother back was the best Christmas present ever. Now my Friday nights are empty, void of all joy and filled with the unbearable desire to see my brother one last time. I wished we'd have gotten a warning so I could have at least gone and said goodbye. But I'm so blessed that my last words to my brother were, I love you. So on the back of this, I've decided to start a new series on this channel dedicated purely to the games that me and my brother have played in our 33 years together on this earth. Through any of the troubles, games were the one passion that we both shared. The episodes will be in no particular order and whilst they will contain memories of my brother and I, after all that's why I'm choosing these games, I will try to keep to the reviews for the games for the most part so that you guys can enjoy them too. I can't promise a set upload pattern as I'm too messed up at the minute to make plans for the future. But the idea is that the Friday night I would have spent with Scott will be time to record the videos. All you need to do is subscribe. If you want to see Scott's channel, I'll link it in the description below. Although, of course, there will be no more uploads on there. Don't worry, there will still be all other uploads, dashcam dummies, poker project, tutorials and random funny gaming moments which may even still feature Scott but this series is dedicated to my brother Scott wherever you are out there this is for you bro I miss you and I love you thanks for listening
Hello everyone, it's Smeep here coming at you one more time from the Game Throne. This is the first in a long, long series of games that my recently deceased brother and I have played or have some kind of memory associated with it. The series will be in no particular order, but I had to start at one of the earliest games I remember us both playing when we were kids. Our parents bought us an Amstrad CPC, the green screen one, and along with it a small collection of games. This was one of them. Postman Pat was developed by Enigma Variations and published by Alternative Software in 1988-1989. And it was a fully licensed game where you take on the role of our protagonist, Postman Pat, going about his daily route. Delivering letters and parcels to the village of Green Day, all within the time limit of one hour. The game itself is relatively simple. The game itself is relatively simple. The game is... The game itself is relatively simple. You control Pat's van, driving to and from the post office to various locations on the map. Essentially one giant fetch quest. Though I suppose you can't complain about that when you're playing a game about a postman. It has two difficulty modes, easy and hard, so far as to which I can only spot a few differences. On easy mode you start in the post office rather than Pat's house, and on hard mode if you crash into a wall you lose a life. Honestly, the game itself isn't that challenging as an adult, but as a child in 1989, I was four and I thought this game was impossible, thanks in part to the glitchy collision detection that means on easy mode, it's possible for Pat's van, Pat, or any other essential sprite to get stuck inside a wall, thus soft locking the game. As you progress, you'll get two to three different mission types. The first is to collect and deliver the letters from the post office to the flashing doors of the village. Simple enough, you can even move back and forth between screens to encourage the game to move the required door to the screen that you're on. There's very little object permanence in this game. It's a little annoying that Pat will only deliver from one side of his van, meaning you have to turn around if the door is on the wrong side of the street, causing a big problem in hard mode where the slightest dent of your van causes you to lose a life. The second is delivering parcels to the cast of the Postman Pat TV show, from Mrs Hubbard, who's often seen wobbling about town on a bicycle after her 11am brandy with the local vicar, to Father Ted, I mean Ted Glenn. These quests lead to the first big hurdle in the game, especially for a child, which is learning the map. The map is persistent and around 20 to 25 screens large. If you're playing on hard mode, you'll lose a life here or there simply from the controls or when the screen changes being faced directly with a wall. Come on! That being said, in the golden days of gaming, drawing out your own map was pretty standard. After this, you'll either get a third mission type or a repeat of mission 1 but with an additional letter to deliver. The third mission type is usually just another fetch quest given to you by the person you've delivered to. It's not enough that you've driven halfway across Greendale, often backwards, to deliver a letter, but Mrs Hubbard has not only been joyriding about Greendale knocking down children left and right on her drunken bicycle rampage, now she wants you to go and collect a Xanax from Greendale's questionably licensed doctor as well. Which leads me onto the part that reminds me of my brother. There's one section in the game where once you've delivered a parcel to Ted Glenn, he tells you to notify Peter Fogg that his sheep have gotten loose. This is a double kick in the teeth. Not only because when you get to Peter Fogg's house does he want you to round up the sheep, but the screen the sheep are on is only a couple of screens away from Ted Glenn's house, so you have to drive all the way past it, talk to Peter, turn around, go back to the sheep, only to be faced with this hot mess. Now, my brother and I were way too young to do this, so we'd always call out for our dad to come and help us, and reluctantly he would. But that's not the end of it. Just like the van getting stuck in the walls, so too can the sheep. You can do all of this just to get soft locked here as well. Overall, an enjoyable title. The graphics are bright and colourful and representative of the TV show on which they're based. The music is absolutely spot on, though after an hour of it, it does get annoying. To my knowledge, you can't officially complete the game, as depending on which difficulty you're on, you either get to six letters or nine and the game loops as long as all of the parcel deliveries are done. The one hour time limit isn't too taxing, especially if you know your way around town. However, it is rather annoying when Mrs. Goggins is forcing Pat to drink his 50th cup of tea that day. Fucking dickhead, mate. What you doing? What you doing, you old bat? Man's got deliveries to do. Fucking can't be sat around here supping on cups of tea all day. Shut up. Fuck's sake. You dickhead. 
all in all, a delightful little game with a lot of charm, but not much reason to revisit it after all these years other than nostalgia. Thanks for watching the first in this series about games my brother and I shared. I'm sure I'll come up with a catchier name at some point, but please do all the things that YouTube has asked you to do. We're almost at 200 subs, which is for me mind blowing. Thank you so much. And Scott, my brother, rest in peace. May your flock of sheep be forever herded.